Hello and welcome to today's webinar, the J5 Dentajet from Stratasys, the latest development of 3D printing technology for dental applications. So we're really uh, excited and sincerely thank you for taking the time to be with Richard and Brian and I today. So I'm Aaron Rue, Dental Lead Specialist for Go Engineer. We also have my colleague Richard Cromwell, uh, a Senior Applications Engineer for Go Engineer, and we also will have Brian Allum from Stratasys. He's the Dental Business Manager for the Eastern U.S. Today we'll be looking at the following. So just a general brief overview of Go Engineer, who we are, you know, how we got into the dental space. Um, and also, you know, what Go Engineer does outside of the, the dental industry as well. But we're going to do a deeper dive into the J5 Dentajet printer system. We'll review its capabilities, the applications, and the efficiencies that it can provide dental laboratories such as yourself. And we're going to touch on some really cool updates and innovative materials and processes that are coming down the pipe that Stratasys is working heavily on um for this year and into 2023 so just a few housekeeping things i wanted to share we will have a q a session during this webinar we'll do that at the end so on the right side you should have your little toolbars you should be able to see the question icon if you click on that a window should open and you can type your questions in there i have my question window open so richard and i can both see those and again, um, we may address them as we see them, or we may just do them at the end. Um, if I miss anything, or if you miss anything, don't worry, we're going to send out a great recording of this that you'll have on file, and you can watch it anytime. So again, thank you for your time, and I'm going to pass it along over to Richard. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks for taking the time. As Aaron said, my name is Richard Cromwell. I am an applications engineer uh, for Go Engineer, and I run their additive manufacturing lab in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Uh, let me just introduce you briefly to uh, who Go Engineer is. Go Engineer provides uh, design and manufacturing tools with expertise that enables customers to reduce the cost, risk, and time required to go live with new technologies and ultimately new products and introduction. Um, We've been collaborating uh, with our customers, and that is at the center of everything that we do with more than 35 years of experience and tens of thousands of customers in high-tech, medical, machine design, energy, and under other industries. Goingenia provides best-in-class design solutions carefully selected that are easy to use, manage, and integrate with other platforms. And we are also pleased to support educational communities as the national and global leader for colleges and universities and schools. And one point to that, Richard, just real quick, yes. I'd like to toot your horn a little bit. So not only do we have great people like Richard who are applications engineers, but we touched upon this earlier as we were getting started. You can actually see a J5 unit behind him. So not only does Richard know the systems, he really knows the systems, right? So just know that you have a full team behind you. You have me on the dental side that works closely with Richard and our other application engineers. So just know that you have a full team behind you to fully support you, whether it's the hardware, software, um, anything within that system. Excellent. Yeah, as uh, another, as we continue talking about going here just a little bit, we have over 40 regional offices across North America. Uh, we're the number one SolidWorks reseller uh, and also a number one Stratasys reseller. And, this shows some of the technologies that we represent beyond those two brands. Um, we have over 150 certified agents, with, uh, technical experts like myself and, and Aaron to, uh, to assist you with uh, making sure that your uh, machine acquisitions go smooth. Okay, so let's jump into uh, the challenges that dental labs face today and uh, how we uh, how Stratasys positions the J5 Dentajet oh, so. so first off, uh, a lot of the labs out there are using high-end DLP systems um, to produce their uh, parts, and uh, they typically will have a much smaller tray than you will find on Stratasys machines. The printing is completed quickly, but with a lower output because of the small tray size, 
as well as um, the post-processing that is usually involved with this uh, type of technology. It's rather late intensive. And to achieve a large volume, current systems require continuous handling. And that's largely because of the speed. You know, if you look at our Origin 1 system, for example, it's very, very fast. But it needs to have an operator present um, to be able to unload and reload the machines. And uh, where the solution that we're going to be talking about today is more of a lights out, uh, less hands on, um, easier to use workflow. Uh, Multi-material parts require multiple steps using um, a lot of other technologies like DLP. And uh, printing devices with three or more materials uh, is often labor intensive. And so like the current solutions that people usually, usually will be utilizing um, involve uh, material replacement uh, for or the usage of several printers. Uh, so you run one material and then you'll have to clean it out and run another one, or uh, you can stagger it with multiple machines, each one running a single material. Uh, then you would have to produce the gingiva masks manually still, and then you'd have to collect all the parts uh, for a case. And then quality with uh, some of these other technologies isn't always guaranteed. It can be very difficult to separate acrylic uh, orthodontic devices from the model. And then Poor separation can result in the poor surface quality and uh, unfortunately a poor fit for the patient. So how can you create more dental parts with accuracy, precision, and significantly less uh, handling by operators? And that's where we introduce the J5 Denigen. And it's the newest addition to the Stratasys dental family. Now, a lot of uh, you may be familiar with um, some of the other printers that Stratasys has been uh, marketing to the dental uh, channel for, for quite some time. And those in the past have been uh, like this, a Cartesian based uh, polyjet system. But today uh, we're gonna be talking about a polar axis um, as opposed to the uh, traditional Cartesian gantry that you'd see in other apology systems. Specialized piezoelectric heads, are, uh, they jet micro microscopic droplets of UV curable photopolymer resin, uh, and they can do uh, multiple materials simultaneously, and they um, jet them directly onto the build tray. Polyjet can quickly print extremely um, lifelike, precise, and accurate models with complex and intricate geometry full color, uh, digital material combinations, and programmable mechanical properties such as shore value geometry. But I like this video because it does showcase um, how the tracks work. And, uh, it is a really interesting techno technology. It's very uh, a novel way of doing 3D. So Richard, just real quick, I want to just touch on one thing. You know, there yeah. may be some people on that have some of the uh, legacy printers, whether it's an object or an Eden. Um, so the J5 with those upgraded Piazzo heads, um, you're going to get a much smoother surface finish than you're typically used to. So uh, so I just wanted to share that because that's a big thing within the dental space is you want to have a nice surface texture, surface quality. So with those upgraded heads, you're going to get uh, a much smoother surface finish and also with the GrabCAD print software and just the, the mechanics of this printer, you're gonna get a much faster print time versus the legacy printers as well. So faster yeah. throughput, more productivity. Absolutely. Um, another thing that's quite a bit different than uh, you know some of the larger Cartesian systems is that the machine has a very small footprint. I mean, it's basically the size of a, of a small refrigerator. Um, and this small footprint would help all dental labs, whether small or large, uh, help to maximize their productivity and get the most out of their space. Um, and it has a large capacity 360 degree print tray that allows for high volume part production. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. But overall, it's a very lab friendly um, uh, piece of equipment. The J5 Denojet produces more dental parts with mixed materials in a single mixed tray print than any of our other printers um, in production right now. 
and it reduces the number of printers or steps that you need to complete a job. So instead of having those three DLP systems, each one loaded with one material, now you can just have one machine and set it up and forget it. The machine operates unattended, so you can just load a tray and walk away. Requires fewer changeovers, less touch time to load, and minimal post-process. And Richard, too, we'll we'll yeah. talk about, you know, to that first point, um, operates unattended, so you can load a tray, walk away. We'll talk about that a little bit, future, you know, in a future slide here on the GrabCAD print, how you can remotely monitor the printer, which is uh, a great feature. Oh, it's great. And uh, it's a feature that I personally use all the time. I like to know <laughs> I, I like to know how much material is loaded, you know, and it, it sure. provides you with all this information. It's great. Um, so uh, having unattended operation with fewer changeovers allows you to simplify your production and re reduce manual labor. And we didn't talk about it yet, but the, you'll see a, a, a slide coming up with a little video that shows the separator uh, digital material that makes orthodontic devices separate easily from the printed model and results in better surface quality uh, and decreased manual. And then, of course, it's still a uh, Stratasys uh, polyjet machine, so it provides the same precision and realism expected of all the Stratasys polyjet systems, and it can create full-color mixed material parts with act without sacrificing patient-specific actions. So this is uh, going into what um, Aaron was just talking about. GrabCAD Print is the is Stratasys's um, proprietary slicing software. It, it is used across most of the systems that they have available today, and it is a easy to use uh, piece of software with minimal training required. It can increase production and significantly reduce print time with automatic tray arrangements. It calculates the time and material resources needed for production before printing. You can schedule and monitor print jobs remotely from an app from your phone. I even have it on my Apple Watch. It sends automatic alerts when the job is printing and uh, done printing and complete. This is a big one. It automatically corrects files, and it's very, very good at it. No need to pull in the third-party software like Magix or anything like that. Um, it, it is uh, exceptionally powerful in that regard. And it gives the ability to run and operate a fleet of Stratasys printers, all from one um, user interface. So it, it's it's a very powerful piece of software, and you can download it for free. You can go to goengineer.com and find it on our additive manufacturing section, uh, or you can find it on Stratasys. Richard, with that automatic file correction, yeah, that's just evaluating the STL file as it's being brought into the GrabCAD. Correct. Yeah, it can it can add it can um, you know one of the problems when you're converting uh, any type of data into STLs is if your normals are reversed or if you have intersecting um, faces, uh, then it can run into problems and make it so that a print won't run. And uh, Bradcad has its own internal uh, ability to run through diagnostics, check the model, and then repair them. And uh, it's it's like I said, it's very good. I think in the past couple of years, I've only had two instances where it couldn't, and out of thousands and thousands of models that it, that it couldn't figure it out. And, uh, and I was still able to print it. Fantastic. Yeah. So now we're gonna take a look at the, at the uh, exciting uh, J5 Denijet applications. And, and feel free, Aaron, to, to jump in here at any time. Yeah. So the first uh, first area that we're going to discuss is orthodontics. Um, the J5 Denijet allows you to cut days off delivery times and produce more accurate and comfortable devices. You can go from intraoral scan to in-house production with a seamless digital workflow. You can simplify uh, the production of acrylic orthotic devices, orthodontic devices, with, with the separator digital material, which allows for the easy separation from the printed model and results in better surface quality and decreased manual labor. And you can 3D print indirect bonding trays or full color study models. So Richard, I'll just touch a little bit on what is separator DM and yeah. also how does that help uh, a laboratory that's doing 
you know, a Holly retainer, salt and pepper technique for ortho appliances. So as you'll see in this video, I think it's the next part, you'll see this layer. So this layer is actually a mix of the support material with the model material. And what that's doing is it's giving that outer surface, that kind of release agent that's needed for the acrylic to not bond to a printed model. Because we all know printed models, acrylic loves those. It'll just stick to it. It'll bond to it. You won't be able to take it off. So the separator DM was engineered uh, just recently. This is actually one of the updates that's coming out. It should be this month or next month for, uh, for that separator DM layer to be applied to that last layer of the model material. And your acrylic will not bond to the printed model, which is great for you know just processing those types of appliances lower labor time, faster production times, and faster turn times. Great. All right, the next um, area that we'll talk about is implantology. Uh, allows for the simplification uh, of the complexity of implant implantology and maximize the production. You can print opaque and rigid implant models, biocompatible and transparent surgical guides, and soft gingiva masks, all on one tray in a single unattended print job. And you can print as many as 47 implant cases per day with only two trays. This is huge for, I think, just throughput production, but also keeping all of your implant cases together, not having to find in another print job your soft tissue or the guides that correspond to those models. Um, this is just a, a, a huge innovation in 3D printing for the dental space where you can print multiple materials at the same time. Um, this, this gets me so excited every time I see it. Uh, it's great. Next is removables. Uh, you can replace traditional hand wax ups and automate the process of cast chrome partials, significantly reducing manual labor. You can boost productivity by printing models and uh, RPD frameworks on a single mixed tray. Uh, print up to 26 models and frameworks per day with only two trays. And reduce patient visits and resets with smooth, precise frameworks. Also, dentures and partial try-ins are produced in less time with smooth, biocompatible materials. And lastly, the crown and bridge, um, you can produce a large volume of precise models in high resolution materials, increasing lab capacity. Eliminate delays and inaccuracies of manual labor, enabling faster production and higher quality models with fewer remakes. And the J5 Dentigen also enables dentists to see crowns and bridges in a matter of minutes, allowing them to see more patients per day. One thing, if we stay here for a quick second, Richard, I think yeah. one of the Achilles heels of 3D printing, especially in the crown and bridge world, and in the implant world, where we saw that uh, that model where a digital implant analog is gonna seat into that. And then you see here, the technician holding a quadrant model with the working model and the opposing, but more importantly, is that removable die. The J5 Dentajet, with its predictability, consistency, and accuracy is gonna be a great solution for these types of models that you need that die to fit into that insert and also the digital implant analogs as well. Uh, there's some KOLs out there, Frankie Acosta is one that he solely uses his J5 Dentajet for all of his implantology models and his Carnot Bridge models is, and is loving the results. So. Um, we have a three shape DME file that'll get you started. You may have to fine tune some of the settings in there, friction grips, things like that, but uh, we can help you along the way. And we also have some ExoCAD uh, parameters as well that can get you started. But, um, but yeah, so the point is super accurate, your removable dies and your analogs are gonna snap right in. Let's look at the... Uh technical specifications of the printer. So this is a pretty busy slide, but it can show you the uh, materials that are available um, and the max printing area, various build modes, 
Um, it prints at an 18.7 micron layer height. And, and, and that, just to that point, so that is yeah. the mode today, the high quality, high speed that we're coming out. I don't want to, you know, jump too far ahead. We'll touch on it again, but um, there will be another mode where that layer is a little thicker and that's where you're going to get a faster print time, not sacrificing the accuracy, but that's the Z height, the 18.75 or 19 micron height. That's correct. So again, we'll take a look at the um, polar axis and rotational build tray because it is a unique feature of the J5 series of machines. Uh, one of the reasons it's so great is we have a static print head. It really only moves on one axis. Um, this allows you to have uh, consistent um, jetting quality, but it's also minimal moving parts, uh, which is terrific because that means that there's less to go wrong. These machines are very, very uh, consistent and um, your uptime is going to be high. The rotating tray allows for shorter radial 3D printing paths for faster printing and uh, better quality. When you have slumps, if let's say you needed to print something very quickly, you can position it closer to the center of the tray and it is going to be able to churn that out uh, very quickly. If you don't want to load up a whole tray just for one, um, a, a handful of small parts, you don't need to. And, and you'll be done with that print uh, very quickly. And then you'll see the transition zone, which is this like high wedge shaped uh, variable area that is based on your part placement. And that what that area is really for, it's the transition zone for the print head to return back to the home position. Uh, we wanted to show you uh, the throughput of the machine and, and show you how we can load all these parts, uh, the BRADCAD print onto a build tray. Uh, modern rotational printing allow, uh, sequence allows for low head movement and constant speed. And so on here. So these are aligner models. They're just horseshoe aligner models. And I think, what was the, what was the number? It's That's what I was just looking at. It's 44. So we were able to fit 44 on this tray. So 44 aligner models and the print time is, uh, this is the print time with the new update that's gonna be coming out here in the next few months. You're okay. under four hours of print time. Yeah, which is three and a half, 40, 44 aligner cases. And then uh, we have some um, orthodontic devices on here as well. Yeah, these are just your full arch ortho model, you know, it could be a full arch crown and bridge model. Um, but again, you know, we have 27, I think, on there. Yep, exactly. And that print time? Just five hours. Yeah. Just. So a great thing about this printer, as I've said before, it's very easy to use. Um, and unlike a lot of the legacy printers where you had to have a separate computer dedicated to that one machine, um, this is a standalone, fully functional printer on its own. Uh, you don't need an external client. It has an advanced seven inch touch panel, and you can see the guy using it right there. And an intuitive and user friendly graphic user interface. And most importantly, end to end maintenance wizards that are really easy and um, it, it uh, gives you a notification when it's time to run them. And so it, 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 it helps you take care of uh, itself. It's, it's pretty great. Another so Richard, really just real, real quick. Um, so the GrabCAD software does require a PC, correct? Yeah. To send the yes. jobs to the, to the printer. But this uh, GUI interface, this is really the functionality of the printer. Correct. Yeah, it, this okay. is actually to run and drive the printer itself. The build preparation software, you still have to run on the computer. But back in the day, uh, printers had to have their um, actual uh, machine, uh, the uh, uh, machine operation software, the actual software that runs the printer, uh, you needed to have a computer dedicated to that that was communicating uh, with GrabCAD print. Um, alternatively, you could also load your stuff onto like a thumb drive. And it, it's not just um, 
on the Polyjet machines, then you'll find these uh, external clients that are required. But if you look at like our big um, uh, SLA machine, the, the NEO, those also, uh, um, they have an internal client with their own software uh, that is run on a machine internally. And uh, it's, the mach it's the machine control software. Gotcha. So. Um, so another difference between uh, this system and some of the legacy printers that are out there for Polyjet is that this uses a UV LED as opposed to a conventional bulb. Um, this is a fantastic advancement because those conventional bulbs, uh, mercury bulbs could fail. And these have a much, much longer life. Um, mine is still the first one. I've been running it for two years uh, every day, basically, and it's still going. And I have no intent, <laughs> no intentions of replacing it until it absolutely needs to be. So just stick on this slide real quick. Yeah. So one huge benefit of this J5 Dentajet and the Polyjet technology is that with each pass of that, uh, and you saw it spinning in the, in the UV light going, with each pass, that part is being 100% cured, which is huge. So yeah. after the print job is done, you remove the parts from the build plate, you're gonna wash off that support material with a high pressure water jet system, and from there, you let it air dry a couple minutes, your part's cured. You're not putting it into a post-process cure unit like other technologies, which is adding another variable. Was there some dimensional change? Uh, was there any type of, uh, uh, of inconsistency? But these parts are 100% cured. Yeah, and, and if you've been using DLP systems in the past where you have to wash off excess resin in a, in a series of IPA baths before putting it into a UV cure cabinet, all that uh, rigmarole has been eliminated. At this point. So this is a, an exciting slide. You get to talk about the materials and various indications for those materials. Um, do you want to help me out with this one, Aaron? Yeah. So, you know, Stratasys has some fancy names for some of these. But uh, this first one, the Med 620, that would be used for all of your model material. Uh, or models, whether it's a, a full arch ortho, a liner model, could be a full arch crown and bridge or a quadrant, implant model, uh, removable dies, also your denture and all on X try-ins, as well as custom trays. So even though this is used for models, it is a biocompatible material that could uh, just short term, right? So just a custom tray in and out, denture, all on X try-in, in and out, in and out of the mouth. Uh, the next one is the Med 610, the biocompatible clear. So this one's used for surgical guides as well as print to cast, such as the RPD frame that we showed you earlier. We have the Med 625 Flex, which is a clear, flexible clear biocompatible material. This one's used for your soft tissue for your implant models, as well as uh, indirect bonding trays for ortho. And then we have the DEN 847, the Verodent Pure White. And then this corresponds with the ones that you see below, your cyan, your magenta, and your yellow. So if you want to print any type of color model, you're going to need these four materials because uh, the primary colors will make any color in the spectrum, right? And we put white in there. So the white and the color can be used for just a white model, and then the colors integrated with the white would be used to make a color model. Yeah, that's correct. The material comes in containers like this, 1.1 uh, kilo containers. Um, you can see in this picture that there's uh, five material channels and one support channel. And uh, each one with two bays. So you can have two of these cartridges, one in each bay uh, for the different materials. And that allows you to print as well as uh, automatically hot swap the materials so you don't run out and maximize your material usage. And then there's also an easily replaceable waste container. It literally takes two minutes um, to replace the waste container. Uh, it's just a cardboard box with a bag in it. And uh, it's very easy to remove it, replace it, and get back to printing. Yeah, so as we're going through the consultative phase with the labs, you know, we, we do have deep discussions of 
what do you want to print and how do you want to use your J5, right? So if you want to do implant models, and that means you would do models, soft tissue, surgical guides. So those would take three out of the, uh, the five bays, right? Um, if you want to do color models, we'll have the white, the cyan, the magenta. Um, so we do have deep discussions of how do you want your J5 set up when our installers come in to do the install and you're ready to go. Um, one other uh, bonus with this machine is that it does uh, is compatible with the Pro Aero um, air extraction system. And basically, this system incorporates an externally mounted plenum, which effectively captures fumes generated during the printing process, process and returns ultra clean filtered air to the operator's breathing zone. Um, it's also very quiet, uh, low power consumption, and has uh, speed control. And uh, I have it uh, running next to me, and um, it totally works. There is no odor from this machine. Is the Pro Aero on right now? Yeah. Okay, super quiet. Yes. Can't super hear quiet. it at all. Nope. Uh, it is significantly quieter than my 450 MC, which I <laughs> turned off for this uh, webinar. It's just so loud. Okay, and so now, uh, I don't know is if Brian um, was able to join us yet. Let's see him right there. Um, but we're getting to the point where we're going to start talking about um, some of the planned updates. Uh, for yeah. the J5 Denijet. Yeah, I don't see him on the attendee list, but that's okay. We can dive right in. Um, so high quality, high speed mode. In a couple of the slides that we showed earlier of the print trays and the, and the print times. So this is an update that's going to be coming out that Stratasys is working on. This is more of a GrabCAD update. This isn't so much an update to the printer. The GrabCAD is going to tell the printer what to do when that print job is sent over. So the high quality, high speed mode is basically gonna be able to jet out more material out of those print heads um, at one time. That's gonna increase your, or decrease your print time, if that makes sense, without sacrificing the quality of the printed part. So such as the, uh, the I think the, the 44 liner models that we showed, you know, just under three and a half hours, that was the high quality, high speed mode. Um, I think in normal mode, it may be, you know, that may be 40% less than in your, in your standard print mode. Um, the separator DM we kind of touched on, that's coming down the pipe here in the next month or two. Again, the last few layers of that ortho model is going to be integrated with a mixture of the support material and the model material kind of giving that that uh, tension free surface where the acrylic isn't going to bond to it trios enabled color models so this is going to be an update with the three shape trio so three shape has been working directly with stratasys i think the update is coming from three shape maybe july august and for a dentist or a clinician that has a trios that's compatible of capturing color scans, scans the patient's mouth, sends that file to the laboratory. The laboratory receives that file and embedded in that file will be a file format that is holding the color data. So what you'll do is you'll put that into the GrabCAD and GrabCAD will then identify that color file You'll print the model as long as your, your J5 is set up for uh, color printing, and it'll print up to 90% accuracy. Now, you know, did the clinician calibrate his intraoral scanner? What was the lighting in the operatory? Things like that. But it will, uh, it will print that model exactly what it captured from the patient's mouth. Now, that's super powerful in a couple ways. One is stump shades. Dental labs are lucky to even get a stump shade on an RX. And then two, even if you did like a check model, if you have, you know, your upper six anterior, something super aesthetic, and you just print the adjacent teeth with the prep, now you're matching exactly what that dent in, all your different shading and everything with the ceramist, with the model in the ceramist hands, which is huge. Um, the transfer zone wedge size reduction, 
that's just in the pictures you saw, you saw that pie, the pie wedge there. Stratasys is figuring out ways how to make that smaller. Now, what that's going to do is it's just going to increase your production, right? You're going to be able to add more parts on the build tray. The water soluble support material, that's still pending. I'll let Richard kind of talk about that because that's that's more your world on that side. And, and yeah, there's a, I'm, I'm there is a new. Hey, water Brian. Is all, oh, Brian, there he is. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I had to hop on a, uh, a previous call, but um, okay. yeah, the water the water soluble support. I know Richard has been um, using this uh, on the commercial side uh, of Stratasys's business, so he can at least speak to uh, how it works. But the reason why it is not on the dental side of the business is we have to do all of our toxicity tests because we do have uh, material that does go in the mouth. Uh, our Med 610, our Med Flex, our, our, our Med 620. So we have to go through our toxicity tests uh, for all versions of the J5 with all materials in order for water soluble to be updated in the uh, in the software and being being used. So uh, we expect that probably Q4 this year. Uh, they're working on it right now to get the toxicity test because it, it it does cost you know a fair amount of money. And, but really, it, it just takes time. It just takes time on our end to get that done. But we're pretty excited about uh, water soluble. Uh, we've had customers asking for that for you know five plus years, and it's just a matter of you know making sure uh, we get it right. But Richard, you can speak to uh, the actual function of it and how it works. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, glad you're able to join us, Brian. Um, the water soluble support, support, water soluble support for the poly, for the J5 systems is still very new. Um, I just got a crate of it in, and uh, it, it it allows you to print models. Where normally with the Sub 711, we would have to use a water jet to remove uh, any of the support matrix that was left on the model. This will allow you to take the model straight out of the printer and drop it into regular tap water and have the support material dissolve away. Um, I totally appreciate what Brian's saying about toxicity. It was something that Aaron and I were discussing before the uh, call today. And so um, uh, it's still new. We're going to be actually, uh, I'm running some tests uh, this week where we're going to be printing some uh, dental models utilizing the water soluble support and then sending it to a post process provider to run um, it through their technology to see how it fares. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, I guess that's the, the point of this entire slide. Stay tuned. Yeah, things are going to continue to improve as this machine is still very new and the technology that is driving is still new. And so it's going to be fantastic to see how things continue to progress. And Richard, just stay on this slide. I kind of left, uh, yeah. I don't want to say the best for last, but I think it's going to be a revolutionary uh, material coming down. Probably Q4, I'm hoping this year. Um, right, Brian, for the digital dentures, temps, and triumphs. I can't wait for this. Yeah. Um, when I joined the company six years ago, we had launched the uh, J750 model, which was the first full color printer in additive manufacturing. It, I mean, it was so cool. It was two weeks before I joined the company. And when I was up in Minneapolis at our home office, the very first question I asked uh, the senior management team was, when can this thing do dentures? And they looked at me <laughs> like I just grew a third eye. And <laughs> And it was like, no, th this is revolutionary. You, you don't know dental, but this is revolutionary. So we're, we're glad that we finally uh, submitted our, our um, primary colors to uh, the FDA to get, five, uh, to get approval. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're now at the, at the mercy of the FDA to get those approved. Um, we are in the process of beta, beta-ing. Uh, at three locations, the uh, the J5 True Dent. Uh, it is the same machine as what you see uh, behind Richard, uh, but it is going to be exclusively for uh, long-term material only. Uh, we have to do that so that there is no potential cross-contamination within the system with any non-biomaterial. So, uh, you know, digital dentures, temporaries, try-ins, uh, that will be machine. Well, that sounds exciting. 
Yeah, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be printed as a monoblock, no looting, you know, with red, teeth, red, yellow, teeth. blue, white, and uh, five materials. Brian, you're going in and out a little bit there. Yeah, a little bit. All right. So uh, I think we'll move on to the next slide, which is basically going to uh, inform you that if you would like more information uh, to request a free quote today from from Aaron, I think he'd be happy to, to deal with them. Yeah, you know, proposal, or even if you just have any general questions, I do see one that popped up from uh, from an attendee that we'll kind of touch base on. So one question was, what are the costs per part like for these materials? So it goes back to that slide with all the materials on that, Richard. So um, I did a little bit of number crunching in preparation to this uh, to this question. So just, just for an example, for a full arch crown and bridge model hollow, you're probably looking around, and this is material cost um, only. You're looking at maybe around $3 cost per part. Uh, a denture try-in, same thing. An all-on X try-in, you're maybe around $2 per part. A custom tray, maybe around the, the dollar per part average, uh, a surgical guide, you're looking at around $3 per part. So very affordable. So Stratasys has made the resins uh, very attractive pricing, which has brought the cost per part cost down. Plus you're able to put a lot of parts into one build, which is also uh, you know, making that justified uh, ROI statement on the material cost. But Zach, I, I have your email. I'll send you more information on this question directly. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, uh, I don't. If there's any other questions, feel free to to pop them into that question field. Sorry, guys, uh, my connection. I got. I lost my connection. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You sound better. Uh, with well, us now, for real. Yeah, kind of thing. Let, 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 let's hope. Uh, is there anything that, um, uh, any other questions uh, specifically on the the digital denture? Did you go over uh, how Stratasys is going to make the, the um, design uh, easier for the CAD operator? Uh, we did not get too deep okay. into that. I was just kind All of right. sharing while you're cutting it out, it's gonna be a mono block, um, no looting teeth to bases, all of that. But uh, but we didn't get into the actual, you know, Vita shades and the and the pink tissue shades. Yeah, so so if, uh, if I get cut off, I apologize, but uh, okay. this, will be for the, this will be for the temporary teeth and the denture, we're gonna have a Vita shade guide. Um, and that will, uh, how we print, because we print down to the voxel level, uh, it will have all the translucency all the way down to the incisal edge that you would get from a a, a carded tooth. Uh, so it's going to be very uh, very high aesthetics, uh, and that's going to be pre-programmed into GrabCAD. So the um, uh, the CAD operator will not have to do any shading or anything of that nature. He'll he or she would just have to pick you know pick out you know what Vita shade they want. Uh, same thing with the base. Uh, we're going to have six uh, different shades. Again, uh, operator won't, they'll just have to select. And because we're printing in uh, multiple colors, uh, it will have, uh, you know, veining inside. It will have flecks of white. It will actually be a, a very aesthetic uh, base. It won't be a monolithic, you know, bubblegum pink base. <laughs> it, it, it'll have... Um, uh, variety in it to, to make it more lifelike, make it more aesthetic. So, uh, but again, more more news to follow as we get uh, closer to launch. Yeah, this it's going to be huge. It, I get all giddy when, whenever we talk about the digital denture <laughs> solution with this uh, with this technology. It, it's it's just going to be it's going to be a game changer for sure. All right. I don't see any other questions that have popped in. Um, again, you know, thank you, R Richard. Anything before in closing you wanted to add, or Brian? 
Yeah, good. Oh, I think uh, I think we've covered it, and I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to uh, listen to our discussion today. If you want further information, you can reach out to Aaron or myself. Uh, our emails are up there. I also encourage you to visit um, GoEngineer.com uh, for all of your um, product design and prototyping needs. Uh, and then please also don't forget to sign up and subscribe to our email uh, newsletter. Uh, register for SOLIDWORKS training, or uh, of course, go visit our Go Engineer YouTube channel where we just uh, achieved 100,000 subscribers. Nice. No, but thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure being with you all today. We all sincerely appreciate your time. We know how busy you are and uh, taking the time out to be with Richard, Brian, and I. Hopeful that you learned, you know, some, uh, you know, tidbits and little bit about the J5 Dentajet. Again, Richard and I and Brian, we're here for you. Don't hesitate to reach out. And we're going to continue to build upon this foundation that we're starting to put together with dental lab education and, and you know, our different products that we can offer you. So continue to keep an eye out for those uh, future webinars that we'll be doing. And again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.